To follow along with the written version of this pattern, use the link on screen now, in the description below, or by going to clubcrochet.com slash tortoise. Hey there, it's Louie, and in this video, I'm gonna be showing you how to crochet my newest addition to our Earth Day collaboration, uh, where we crochet a new endangered creature every year. Um, this year, we're making Tuck, the tiny giant tortoise. This is my addition to this year's collaboration. Um, you can see a bunch of other collaboration patterns for this uh, Earth Day collaboration in the background. All of these patterns are designed to be donate to download. So all the proceeds to all of the purchases for these patterns go to the World Wildlife Fund to help protect the animal that you're crocheting. And this year I designed a giant tortoise because I just thought it was so cute. And what's so fun about this pattern is not only does it look adorable and it's extremely fun to crochet but it actually can tuck in and out of its shell it can go in and out of the shell which is just so cute and fun i just love it i love making uh, little additions like that to my patterns and i just thought this was such a fun idea and uh, yeah, I think I really, really like it. Um, if you wanna check out some more of our Earth Day patterns, you can find them all at clubcrochet.com slash Earth Day. Um, this year's other newest edition is another turtle from Sir Pearl Gray. I reached out to him and said, hey, I wanna do two turtles this year for our Earth Day collaboration. What do you say? And he said, oh, heck yes, I'm gonna do a sea turtle. And so this is Finn the Sea Turtle from Sir Pearl Gray. Um, I'll be talking a little bit more about this later on uh, at the end of this video, but yeah, you should also go check out Finn the Giant sea, or the Sea Turtle as well after you finish making your tuck the giant, tiny giant tortoise. Um, but yeah, you can see a lot of them on in the background there uh, and you can find them all at clubcrochet.com slash earth day. Okay, a couple of things to go over before we actually get hooking. The first is you, uh, there is a right and a left-handed version of this video available. Um, if you wanna find the opposite version, check out links in the description. In fact, everything I'm talking about will have links in the description uh, so you can quickly get, get to uh, different parts of this pattern. Uh, but yeah, there's a left and a right-handed version of this video. Make sure to like and subscribe. Uh, that is a great way to support this channel. It's totally free. Like down below, subscribe to the channel, and if you hit the little bell icon, you'll get notified when we come out with new videos like our weekly live crochet alongs that we do every single week. Um, this week, I'm actually crocheting Tuck the Tiny Giant Tortoise live uh, as a live crochet along. So make sure to subscribe and hit the little bell icon so you don't miss out when those come out. If you wanna follow along with this pattern, uh, there are time codes in the description of this video and in the PDF version of the pattern. You can use those to quickly jump to different parts of the pattern. Uh, so you can quickly jump and skip straight to, to making the legs or making the body or whatever have uh, you wanna do. Um, so check out those links and those are in the description and at the bar at the base of this video. And then the last thing I wanna talk about is that this pattern is not really designed for complete beginners. I would say this this pattern is intermediate, maybe even advanced, um, because there's a lot of weird techniques that I created specifically for this pattern that I'll definitely be using later on, but it's not really designed for complete beginners. If you are a complete beginner, I suggest starting with Crocheting 101, my How to Crochet series. Um, it is It will take you through everything that you need to know to learn how to crochet, or check out one of our more beginner-friendly Earth Day patterns like our um, dugong here which is very beginner friendly or our taper from um, Ohana Crafts which is also very beginner friendly good ones to start off with um, if you need extra help there's a discord channel and a Facebook group for club crochet that you can check out in the description great places to go to ask for extra help share your projects and just hang out with other crocheters you can also comment down below into the comments uh, if you need some extra help I'll make sure to keep a lookout on those comments but if you go down into the comments and you see someone asking for help and you're able to help out please do so um, that would help me out as well but I'll make sure to keep a lookout on in the comments as well okay Okay. Well, without further ado, let's get a uh, hook in. Well, let's talk about all the materials that you're going to need to crochet your tiny tortoise today. Ooh, wow. I That was an alliteration. That was great. All right, let's move on to the material. For this pattern, you're going to need the following materials. Now I'm using all worsted weight yarn in 100% cotton. It's my favorite kind of yarn to use for this project because it's very crisp and clear to see. Um, specifically, we're going to be using the colors brown for the back of our shell. We'll need beige for the bottom of our shell. 
and then we'll need green for the main colors of the body. Uh, because I'm using all worsted weight yarn, I'll be using a size G, four millimeter crochet hook in this video. You also need, of course, a pair of scissors and a darning needle. You'll need a little bit of thread. That's gonna be for adding our mouth. You'll only need just like barely any. And then of course you'll need some safety eyes. I'll be using size six millimeter safety eyes in this video. If you wanna get a bottle of eyes like this, they are available in the shop and a great way to support this channel. Besides that, you'll just need a little bit of stuffing to stuff up the different parts of the body. Um, and uh, yeah, if you like this and you wanna help support this channel and you wanna get all these materials available here, these are actually the same materials that are available in my new seasonal crochet kit uh, titled Photosynthesis. It's a new seasonal crochet kit that includes all the materials to make six different projects um, and alternative projects throughout the different seasons. So this is actually an alternative pattern for our seasonal crochet kit. So meaning that you could crochet this pattern instead of one of the six patterns that the kit is designed for. Um, it's really, really cool. I highly suggest you check it out and it's a great way to support this channel. Um, you can learn more by using the link in the description. Uh, but yeah, all right. Well, I think that's about everything that we need to talk about. Let's go ahead and get crocheting and crochet our tiny giant tortoise. We're gonna actually start with our legs. Okay, so we're gonna start by making the legs and we'll get started with our green yarn here. And we're gonna start with a magic loop. Now I do have a video tutorial where I'll show you all about the magic loop and a few different ways to make it that you can check out right here. But just for simplicity's sake, let me show you really quick my favorite way to do the magic loop. I like to have the yarn pointed downwards towards the ground and hold the yarn with my thumb and middle finger like that. Now with my uh, index or my ring and pinky finger, I like to pinch the tail end with the end there. And now I'm gonna go around my index finger and middle finger twice. The goal here is we're making an X on the front. Notice how I went over it like that to make an X on the front and two parallel lines on the back. We're gonna take this end, attach to the ball of yarn, place it in between your pinky and ring finger with the other end. And now we can take our crochet hook and get started on the magic loop. You want the back of your hand facing you so the two parallel lines are facing you. Take your crochet hook and go under that first bar and hook onto the second one and pull that second one under the first one and then loop it around like this to create a little loop on the front. Now we're gonna go over that first bar and hook onto the second one. It's easiest to help guide your hook or the yarn over your hook like that and then pull it through the loop to create a chain and there you go. That is my favorite way to do the magic loop. And now we can get started uh, with our foot. So we're going to st get started with round one. For round one of the feet, we're just going to single crochet six times into the magic loop. Now, I'm not going to go into extreme detail for every single stitch in this pattern, except for the ones that are extremely complicated. For the single crochets, I'm just going to go ahead and assume you understand how to do the single crochet. So we're going to do six of these into the magic loop. One and two, three, four, five, and six. And the only reason I'm going, uh, not doing a crazy amount of detail there is because that is the beginner stitch and this is not a beginner pattern. So if you are a beginner, you should really try a different pattern uh, instead of this one, like I said in the intro. Okay, the next thing I wanna do is grab a stitch marker just so we can keep track of where we're at in our pattern. I'll go ahead and use a little bit of our yellow yarn here um, just so we can keep track of where which round we're on. Okay, I'm just gonna place that in the center here and pull this tail end tight around that yarn. Okay, and I'll just go ahead and fold our stitch marker over and continue on. Okay, so now we're on to round two of the feet. And round two, we're gonna be adding our little toes here using a kind of a uh, I, they're kind of like a mini bobble stitch, but first we need to get to our first toe. So we're gonna start by increasing into the very first stitch that we made right here. Now this pattern is worked in the round, so we don't need to turn at all. We can just get our crochet hook into our first single crochet that we made in round one and do an our increase stitch into that same stitch. So for an increase, we're gonna be doing two single crochets into the same stitch. So there is one single crochet and we're gonna work into the exact same stitch and 
make our second one just like that. Okay, uh, notice how I'm working around our tail end as we work our second round. Uh, just to keep it in place and um, you, yeah, you still wanna keep a long end for sewing it onto the body later. All right, so there's our first stitch. Uh, two single crochets in the same stitch for our increase. Now we're going to do a series of repeats of doing a single crochet and then our toe stitch, AKA a double crochet, two together into the same stitch. We wanna do that three times in a row. So let's go ahead and do our first one here. The first part of our repeat is just a single crochet. So we're gonna go into the stitch, yarn over, pull it through the stitch and pull through two. That's gonna be the start. You wanna do one single crochet. Now we wanna do our toes, and our toes are gonna to be made with a double crochet two together. To do that, we're going to yarn over, insert into the stitch, the same stitch that you just worked into. So we're gonna go into that same exact stitch. We're gonna yarn over again and pull that through the stitch. And now you should have three loops on the hook. And now we can yarn over and pull through just the first two loops on the hook, one and two, like that. And now we're gonna repeat that process one more time into the same exact stitch. So we're going to yarn over, go into the same stitch, yarn over again, and pull that through the loop. And then we wanna yarn over and pull through just two loops, just the first two, one and two, like that. Now we can yarn over and pull through all the loops on the hook. There should be three loops on your hook now. And you really wanna to try to scoop it like that, which will help you get in and out of the stitch a little bit easier. So that's gonna be how to make our toes and our little repeat here. So we're gonna do that repeat three times, one single crochet and then one uh, toe stitch after that, um, AKA a double crochet two together. Okay, so we're gonna go into the next stitch and do it again. We'll do one single crochet and then our little toe, yarn over into the stitch, yarn over and pull it through the stitch, yarn over and pull through just two, one and two, and repeat that again. Yarn over into the same stitch, yarn over and pull through, yarn over and pull through two, one and two. Now finally, yarn over and pull through all the loops on the hook to finish up that toe. All right, one more of those repeats because we're making three toes total. So we'll do one more into this next stitch, a single crochet to get started, and then our double crochet two together. Step one, two, there you go. Now we're gonna do that one more time into the same stitch, yarn over and pull it through, and pull through two, one and two. Now to finish up, yarn over and pull through all the loops on the hook. Okay, now for the rest of this round, we're just gonna do increases into our last two stitches here, just two increases in a row. So here's our first increase, and remember an increase just means two single crochets into the same stitch. Just one and two, and then here's our last two. Now at the end of this round here, you should have 12 stitches around as your final stitch count. All right, and that's gonna be the end of round two. Now we'll pull up our stitch marker and continue on to round three. Now round three is nice and easy. We're just gonna do a single crochet into every single stitch around, nice and simple. And this is a good chance for you to count your stitches. There should be 12 stitches around as you work all of your single crochets into all of your stitches. Into your stitches. Okay, just a few more. One, two, and then our last two here. It's gonna be 11 and our 12th single crochet. All right, pull up our stitch marker and continue on to round uh, four. For round four, we're gonna do two single crochets and then an invisible decrease, and then four more single crochets, another invisible decrease, and finish up with two last single crochets to get around the round. Um, and that's gonna bring you down from 12 down to 10 stitches around. Now, don't worry, I'll show you what an invisible decrease is just in case you never heard of one before. We're gonna start with our two single crochets though. Just regular old single crochets for just one and two. Now we wanna do our invisible decrease. So we're gonna take our crochet hook and we're gonna work under the front loops only of the next two stitches at the same time. The easiest way to do that is poke up from the bottom so that you make sure you're only under that first front loop. 
not under both like this. This is wrong. This is right, just under the first front loop. And then get your crochet hook around and into position for the second front loop here and get under that second front loop also. So notice how I'm under two front loops at the same time. And now you just need to yarn over, pull that loop on the hook through the two loops that you went under the front loops for. The easiest way to do that is with a scoop so you don't accidentally thread the yarn and then yarn over and pull through two loops to finish up an invisible decrease. This is gonna be a way to decrease very subtly and we're gonna be using it pretty often in this pattern. Okay, so there's our two single crochets, invisible decrease. Now you wanna do four more single crochets to get to our next invisible decrease. So there's one, two, three, and four. Okay, now our next invisible decrease. Again, you're gonna poke up from the bottom and go front loop, oops, front loop only, and front loop only like that, and do a single crochet. Okay, last two stitches right here, one and two, just regular single crochets for those last few stitches. And that will be the end of round four. For round five, nice and easy, just another round of just single crochets around, and now you should have 10 stitches around. So we'll just go ahead and do these 10 single crochets nice and quick. And you might be able to guess that the next round after this, we'll be decreasing it down yet again. Yet again. Okay. All right, and that's gonna be the end of round five. Okay, so for round six, we'll pull our stitch marker up. And for round six, we're gonna be decreasing it down to eight stitches around. To do that, we're going to do two single crochets and then an invisible decrease, then three more single crochets, another invisible decrease over here, and then finishing up with one last single crochet to bring us down to eight stitches around. So that's gonna be two single crochets, just like normal, one and two. And then our invisible decrease, remember you wanna go up from the bottom, go front loop only, front loop only, and then our regular single crochet. And then we wanna do three single crochets to get to our next invisible decrease. One, two, let's get a little bit more yarn, and three. And then our next invisible decrease, going front loop, front loop, and then our single crochet. And then finally, one last single crochet to finish up uh, round six. Oops, make sure we don't accidentally pull that stitch marker through. Oh, okay, there we go. All right, stitch marker up, and we'll continue on to uh, round seven. Now round seven is gonna be the beginning of our kind of weird thing that I do for these feet. So we're gonna be basically making the foot angle like that. Let me show you a finished one here. So you can kind of see. Notice how it's got like a bit of an angle to it. Just a little bit of a, of a turn. To do that, we're going to be working into the back loops only for some stitches and then the front loops only for other stitches. We're also going to be doing that to create a little line in the front of the leg, like a crease in between where his knee socket would be. So to do that, we're going to work into the back loop only, meaning this loop furthest from us, and just do a slip stitch into the first one. This is gonna be how we're gonna be doing our curve. So first we're gonna do a slip stitch into this round, working into the back loop only. And then to the next round, we're gonna be working into the front loop that we didn't work into to do a single crochet. And that'll give us a kind of a natural turn to our piece without having to do increasing and decreasing around. So we're gonna start by going into the first back loop only like that. Notice how I do that by pointing straight down from the top to make sure I'm only into that back loop. And then we're going to yarn over and do a slip stitch. So we're gonna pull it through that loop and then through the loop on the hook like that. Okay, so we want one slip stitch into the back loop only. And then we're gonna work into both loops to do two single crochets. Go under both of these loops here 
and we'll do one single crochet and two single crochets. And then we're gonna work into the back loops only again for three stitches, but this one's not to make that curve. This one's actually just to make this crease in the front so it looks more like a turtle leg. So it looks like that's where its knee would go. That's the whole point of these next three stitches, which are gonna be single crochets into the back loop only. So again, just like before, we're gonna go through the top, poke downwards so that we're only under that back loop. And this time we're not gonna do slip stitches, we're doing single crochets. So there's one single crochet, into the back loop only. There's two. And then the last one, right there, will be three. Okay, and we'll finish this up by doing two more single crochets, working into both loops now. So you don't need to work only in the back loop, you can work into both loops. So we'll do one there, and, oop, there we go. That'll be two. Okay, and that will be the end of round seven. We'll pull our stitch marker up now, but this next round is gonna be a little weird. So for round eight, we're going to do, um, I call this in the pattern WO. When I say WO, I mean we're working over the current round and into the unused front loop only from the round previous. So that means this right here is gonna be the first stitch that we're gonna work into. We're gonna do a single crochet into that front loop only, and then we're going to do regular single crochets into both loops for the remainder, uh, uh, for the remainder uh, seven stitches in the round. So the first one's gonna be in this front loop, and then the rest are gonna be in both loops like normal. So for the front loop only, it's easiest to pull the loop out like this to get more movement of your crochet hook, and then you can get under that front loop a lot easier. The other way I found to do it is poking straight in and then using my hook to hook onto it and then push out like that. Both are good uh, options for getting under that front loop only. Once you're under that, I'm gonna pull my crochet hook, I mean my yarn tighter to tighten that loop up and then do just a regular single crochet into that front loop only. Now we'll do regular single crochets for the remainder seven stitches under both loops for all these single crochets. So notice how I'm going straight in and then poking up like that to really make sure I can get under it, which can be kind of hard at this point in the pattern because it's such a small um, hole that we're working with. So just a few more single crochets here to get to the end of this round. One, two, and here will be the last one, oops under both of those loops like that. All right, we'll pull our stitch marker up, not our tail end. Don't forget, you wanna keep this tail end for sewing into the body, so that's why I haven't cut it. All right, but now we are on to round nine. For round nine, we're gonna be working into the back loops only, doing our slip stitches again to prepare another um, uh, working over round so that we can get just a little bit more of a curve. So we're gonna work into the back loops only of the first two stitches to do a slip stitch. So we're going into this first back loop only here, poking straight down and up, and then doing a slip stitch. So there's one, and, oops, two. So don't forget, they're slip stitches, not single crochets. So there's two slip stitches, and then the rest of our single crochets, six more, single crochets, just working as normal. So there's one, two, three, four, five, and six. And there we go. That'll be the end of round nine. You should still have eight single crochets or, or eight stitches around to work with. Pull our stitch marker up and we're gonna work our very last round here, round 10. For round 10, our first two stitches are gonna be WO working over stitches. So these first two are gonna be single crochets into the unused front loops only from the round before. So those two right here. And then the rest of them are going to be six single crochets just as normal. So we're gonna do what we did before, pull our loop out to get under that first, oops, let's try that again under that first 
front loop only like that. Then pull our stitch tight and do our single crochet. There we go. So that's gonna be one. Oops, okay, let me do that one again because I don't have to, but notice how this is just a little bit more open than normal. I don't really like that. So I'm gonna pull that loop out a little bit, just that last bit, and then I'm gonna pull tighter to tighten that loop up and then do our single crochet. Not super necessary, but it's nice to have a consistent uniformity between your stitches. So that's why I did that. Now we're gonna do one more of those front loop only single crochets. So we're going into this bar right here like that and doing our single crochet like that. Okay, the rest of the stitches in our final round here, round 10, are just gonna be single crochets into each stitch around. And we're just gonna work into both loops as normal. So we want one, two, three, four, five, and then our last one right here will be six. Finally, you wanna slip stitch one into the next stitch right here, just a simple slip stitch working under both loops. And then we can cut the yarn. You want a somewhat long end, about that long is totally fine. Um, just enough to sew it onto the body later on. And then just pull this all the way through. Last thing we'll do is just get rid of our stitch markers. I'm just gonna pull them out. And we'll use this again in just a second for our next piece. Okay, and there we go. That is gonna be how to crochet your legs. Um, the only other thing actually is you do wanna stuff up the leg a little bit. Uh, the best way to do that, um, you can also stuff this while you're sewing it on, but the best way to do that is with a stick. Uh, a crochet hook has a difficult time getting into this uh, in my experience to get into there. So I'm just gonna crochet, or stuff it up with our little stick here. You do not need to stuff these a lot, just a little bit so that they hold their shape when you squish them. And I'll show you what I mean in just a second. Okay, that's probably enough. Okay, so the idea is here that when you squish this, it should pop its way back to normal. So I might want just a little tiny bit more stuffing just to be safe. It's nice to get the legs stuffed up as well, like the body of the leg. Body of the leg, you know what I mean. All right, so that's gonna be how to make your little feet. There's your little toes there. You wanna look at the toes a little bit better and look at it from the side and from this side. Great. Okay, now the next thing we're gonna be making is our body. Okay, so the body of our um, tortoise here is gonna be uh, kind of straightforward for the first few rounds, and then we're gonna do some weird slip stitches to shape it a little bit uh, differently. And you're gonna get what the point of this body is. The idea of the body is that we wanna make it so that the head can go tuck in and out of the body. So we're gonna make a hollow body with a hole where the neck will go into. Um, all right, but that means we're gonna go from tail to neck all the way across. All right, so what we're gonna start with is with a magic loop, and I'm just gonna go ahead and get our magic loop started since I just showed you how to do one. And we're gonna start with just doing four single crochets into the magic loop. So I'm just gonna start into our magic loop and do four single crochets, pretty easy. Okay, one, two, three, and four. All right, let's get our stitch marker here right into the center of our magic loop and then we can pull the tail end to close around our stitch marker. I kind of did a weird thing, but I kind of liked it. Well, whatever. Okay. Fixed it. All right. So that's the end of round one for your body. I'm gonna pull our stitch marker up here and continue on to round two. For round two, I am gonna try to work around our tail end as much as I can here, but for round two, we're going to be doing uh, the following repeat. 
one single crochet and then one increase repeated twice. So let's do that twice and then it'll be a single crochet, another increase. And that will bring you up from four stitches, which is what you currently have, to six stitches, which is what you'll have at the end of this round. So we're gonna find our way into our first single crochet right here. I always have to wiggle my crochet hook into that stitch. And then we can do one single crochet. Before I pull through for the single crochet, I do wanna take my tail end, place it over the ends so that I can lock it into place. So there's our first single crochet. And then into our next stitch right here, it's kind of hard to tell where the next one is because it's like, looks like it's so far away. But this one, oops, this one right here is the same stitch you just worked into. So that this one over here would be where our next single crochet will be. And the stitch after our first single crochet is gonna be an increase. So that's actually gonna be two single crochets into the same stitch. So there's gonna be one, boom, and two, boom, in the same stitch. And we're gonna repeat that one more time. So a single crochet into the next stitch right here. And then an increase into our last stitch right here to bring our stitch count up to six stitches. One and two in the same stitch. Okay, pull our stitch marker up and we'll continue on to round three. For round three is actually pretty easy. We're just doing a single crochet into every stitch around. So just a nice simple round of just single crochets all the way around. And we'll go ahead and just keep track of our stitches here knowing that we have six stitches around. And we're also gonna try to make sure that our tail end of our stitch marker doesn't get pulled through our stitches. Although if it does, it's really not the end of the world. We're gonna pull it all out anyhow in just a sec. Or well, at the end of this part. Okay, two more, this will be five. And then our last stitch right here is six. And that will be the end of round three. And you can see we're making just a little tiny tail here. Now make sure that you have it so that your outside of your stitches is facing you, by the way. You're not looking at the inside of your stitches and it's flipped inside out. If it is flipped inside out, flip it back the right way. Okay, pull our stitch marker up and we'll continue on to round four. For round four, we're increasing up to eight stitches around. So to do that, we're going to do two single crochets. Get my cat fur out of the way. There we go. One and two... There we go, two single crochets, and then an increase into the next stitch right here. So that means two single crochets and then one increase. And we're gonna repeat that process two times total. So one, two single crochets, and then one increase or two in the same stitch. We'll repeat that again, two single crochets will be one and two, and then our increase into this last one right here, one, and two in the same stitch. And that will be the end of round four. Okay, let's pull our stitch marker up here and continue on to round five. Um, we're also gonna cut this tail end. We actually don't need our tail end at all now and it just will get in our way. So let's go ahead and cut that, let that go. Pull our stitch marker up and continue on to round five. For round five, we're doing a single crochet into our first stitch and then an increase into the next. Then we're gonna repeat that process four times total. That's gonna bring your stitch count up from eight, which is what we currently have, up to 12, which is what we'll have at the end of this round. So we're gonna go into our first one right here, do a single crochet into our first stitch, and then an increase into the stitch after right here for our second stitch. One and two. All right, now we'll repeat that process uh, four times total. So that's our first repeat. Let's do our second one. We want a single crochet into our first and then an increase after it right here. One and two. Keep doing that repeat, single crochet one and then increase one here. One and two. And then our last repeat, one single crochet, and then one increase. There we go. Should have 12 stitches around now. Pull our stitch marker up and continue on to round six. 
Round six is nice and easy. Just a single crochet into every stitch around. A good chance for you to count your stitches. And yeah, just a nice little break. You don't have to think too much. And it's always nice not to have to think too much while you're crocheting. Sometimes it's just what you need. It's just what you need. Okay. 11. This will be our last one for 12. Okay. Pull our stitch marker up and continue on to round seven. For round seven, we're going to do three single crochets and then an increase four times in a row. And that's it. That's going to bring us up from 12 stitches to 15, which is what we'll have at the end of this round. We're also going to keep a stitch marker in this round to keep track of where we want to add our legs, but we'll do that after actually, um, yeah, we'll do this that after this round. So we're going to do four single crochets, I'm sorry, three single crochets and then an increase. So there's one, two, and three. Three single crochets, and then our increase right here. We four and five. And we'll repeat that uh, three times total. So we're gonna do that, um, yeah, three times. So we're gonna do that two more times. So, so let's do it again. One, two, three, and then our increase right here, four and five. One more repeat, one, two, three, and then our last increase right here, four and five. All right, pull our stitch marker up. You should have 15 stitches around now. Now, before I continue on to the next round, um, well, actually we'll do one more round and then I'll do uh, where our stitch marker is. We wanna put a place marker for where the back legs are gonna be sewn on, but it's probably gonna be a little bit easier after we do one more round because uh, we're gonna need a marker in both of the rounds. So let's do one more round first. So we'll move on to round eight, pull our stitch marker up. For round eight, it's a little bit different. You're gonna do four single crochets and then an increase two times, just two times, and then you're gonna finish up by doing five more single crochets to get to the end of the round, and that's gonna be all. So we're gonna do four single crochets and then an increase, one, two, three, and four, and then our increase after it right here. So two in the same stitch. One, two. And we're gonna do that repeat one more time, four single crochets, one, whoops, there we go, two, three, and four, and then our next increase right here. There we go and then finish up with five more single crochets to get to the end of this round. Just pretty easy, five regular single crochets. One, two, three, four, and oops, that yarn got threaded, there we go, five. Okay, and that's gonna be the end of round eight. You should now have 17 stitches around, so if you wanna count around to 17 stitches. We actually are gonna count around in just a second, actually. So we're gonna pull our stitch marker up really quick, and I'm just going to be um, adding our stitch markers so that we know where to sew the legs on later on. So what we need is just a little bit of yarn in a separate color that you're, we're not gonna be using for our other stuff. So I'll just go ahead and use some of this really pink yarn since that's not gonna get in our way at all. And we'll thread this onto a needle. And we're just gonna use this to create a place marker. The place marker that we wanna use is we're making the place markers for our back legs first. Our first place marker is gonna be in round seven, stitch 11. So we just finished round uh, eight. So that means round seven is gonna be in this round before which ends right here. So we're gonna count up 11 stitches and go into the center of the stitch. So that's gonna be one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Oops, let's count that again because I miscounted. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. 10, right? And then 11 is gonna be right here. So it's gonna be in to that center of our 11th stitch right here, right into the center. The, other marker, so we're gonna go ahead and pull that all the way through, 
and we're gonna come out from where the other marker is gonna be. The next marker is gonna be round eight, stitch two. So that's gonna be this round we just finished, stitch number two. So that's gonna be one and two. We wanna come out through the center of stitch two there. So we're gonna come straight through that center. Let's go ahead and try to dodge our stitch marker there. One and two, which will be right there, like that. Okay, so that's where our stitch markers are gonna go. I'm actually just gonna cut these really, really short. I don't really need to cut both of them. We can use these, this stitch marker for the other one later on, but we can go ahead and cut it really nice and short, just like that. We're just gonna need this for noting later, so we just can keep those in place. Okay, and we'll continue on to round nine. For round nine, pull our stitch marker up. We're going to do eight single crochets and then an increase and then eight more single crochets to bring us up from 17 stitches to 18 stitches. Pretty self-explanatory. Just make sure to avoid the stitch marker here as you go or we're gonna have to add it in again. So that's gonna be one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, and eight, and then our increase will be right here, one and two in the same stitch, and then uh, eight more single crochets to get to the end of this round. One, two, make sure our stitch marker doesn't come out, three, four, five, six, oops, seven, and eight. There we go. That's going to be the end of round nine. For round 10, nice and easy round. We just need to do a single crochets into every stitch around for round uh, 10 here. So nice and simple, just single crochets all the way around. We did, oh, we almost lost our stitch marker here. You can see it just barely poking through. So let's try to go ahead and not lose that. There we go. Okay. There we go. Saved it. All right. Single crochets into every stitch around. And it's because I keep pushing it down, the stitch marker down with my left finger when I'm reaching in. So just be careful. Maybe don't cut it as short as I cut it. Or just add those place markers later on in the piece if you don't mind counting which round you're on. Okay. Seventeen, and this will be our eighteenth single crochet. Pull our stitch marker up and continue on to round eleven. For round eleven, we're going to start incorporating slip stitches. And the reason we're going to be incorporating slip stitches in the place of single crochets is because we want it to have a higher back than it does bottom because we want the hole to be right here, kind of like facing downwards a little bit. And that's gonna be because the head gonna, is gonna tuck into the body like that. So to do that, we're gonna re be replacing a lot of the stitches right here on where the belly would be right here um, with s slip stitches. We're gonna replace the single crochets with slip stitches. Okay, so here is our first example of that. We're on round 11. And for round 11, we're going to do two slip stitches then 14 single crochets, and then finish up with two more slip stitches. So start with two slip stitches, one and two. The important thing to note as you make your slip stitches is make sure that top loop is relatively loose because it's gonna be really ridiculously difficult to get into if you crochet those too tight. So make sure your slip stitches are pretty loose. So there's one, two, and then 14 single crochets. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, this will be thirteen and fourteen. And now you want to finish by doing two more slip stitches to finish this up. So there's one and two. 
to finish up round 11. Now we'll pull our stitch marker up and continue on to round 12. For round 12, we're gonna do um, actually the same round again. So that's gonna be two slip stitches, 14 single crochets, and then two more slip stitches. So we're gonna start in our first slip stitches here. Now the slip stitches are hard to work back into. So what I like to do is place my crochet hook where I know I wanna get under both those loops and just push it in like that, like really kind of force its way into that stitch. And we're gonna do two slip stitches. So there's one slip stitch and two, and then 14 single crochets. Just doing that same round again. Okay. One more. Okay, so that's 14 uh, single crochets, and then our last two will be slip stitches. So that's gonna be one and two. Okay, now before we continue on to our next round, let's pull our stitch marker out because we wanna add our next two markers here for our next two legs. We're just gonna thread on our needle here. And our first marker is gonna be into round, um, this is gonna be for the front legs, by the way, gonna be into round 11, stitch number 15, and our second is gonna be into round 12, the one we just did, stitch number three. So we actually might be able to do it backwards instead of the other way around. So let's start with stitch number three of the round we're currently on. So that's one, two, and three. It's gonna be right here. Again, don't forget, you wanna get right into the center of that stitch, actually. Right into the center of that stitch. Okay, so that's the first spot. The next one is round, uh, it's actually, I actually did it the other way around. So I did our second spot first. So our first spot was round 11, stitch number 15. So that's gonna be the round ahead of this. So if this was stitch number three, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15. That's gonna be this stitch right here. So we're gonna come out through the back and come right through the center of that stitch. And again, don't forget, this is just so that we can keep track of where the legs are gonna get sewn on later. So we can leave those somewhat long, not too crazy long, cut it, and we'll use that later on in our piece. And continue, oopsies, I pulled that stitch out. Let's do that again. Luckily, it's still pretty open, so we don't need to stress about it too much. There we go, fixed it. All right. There we go, pull our stitch marker up. Unfortunately, our stitch marker is on the other side of our yarn, so we gotta make sure that doesn't pull our stitch out. There we go, okay. Now we're back in the game. Pull a stitch marker up, and we'll continue on to round 13. For round 13, we're gonna be doing three slip stitches, single crochet three, three invisible decreases, three more single crochets, and then finish up with three slip stitches. This round's gonna bring us down from 18 stitches, which is our current stitch count, down to 15. So we're gonna to start to bring it down so that the top starts to arc its way down. That's the goal there. So we're gonna do 13, I mean, sorry, in batches of three, three slip stitches. Let's find our first one right here. Make sure we're on the right side of our stitch marker. We got one, let's do that one again, there we go, two, and three, and then three single crochets, one, two, and three, and then three invisible decreases, so bottom up, bottom up. Remember we did invisible decreases in the legs. There's one invisible decrease. Two. And three. And then three more single crochets. One, two, and three. 
the stitch marker up out a little bit, and then finish up by doing three more slip stitches to get to the end of the round, which will be one, two, and three. Pull our stitch marker up like so, and continue on to our next round. Round uh, 14, nice. For round 14, nice and easy, three slip stitches, uh, and then single crochet nine, and then three more slip stitches. And we're actually gonna repeat that um, for three rounds in a row. So that's three slip stitches, nine single crochets, and then three more slip stitches uh, for three rounds in a row. So we're gonna keep going around doing that three times. So let's go ahead and do our first of those three repeats. Three slip stitches. Now, it's kind of hard to tell. Looks like this is gonna be our first one right here. So right next to that, where our stitch marker is, gonna be right there. We want one, uh, that slip stitch is trying to fight us. So we're gonna try to fix it. There we go, nice. There's one slip stitch, two, and three slip stitches, and then nine single crochets. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, and nine. And then three more slip stitches to get to the end of the round. One, two, and three. So we're gonna repeat that three times total. So that was our first repeat. Pull our stitch marker up. We're actually running out of stitch marker here. So we might have this be our last. Yeah, I think we might have this be our, uh, you know what, let's pull our stitch marker up. Let's go ahead and just start getting some more stitch markers so that we don't lose it. One, we'll be pulling it out later anyhow. Make sure just to not lose our other stitch markers as we go because at this point we really don't want to lose them Especially if we don't have stitch markers to be able to go back with and see where we left off. You know what I mean? All right, that's pretty good. We'll push this stitch marker up maybe Maybe not There we go, okay, we'll just leave the rest of that out like that Pull it up and continue on to our next repeats. And don't forget, we're repeating that same thing of doing three slip stitches. We only did our first repeat. We want three of these repeats. Three slip stitches, the end out of the way. One. Okay, so here's where one that I made it just a little too tight. So it can be kind of difficult to get in there when it's too tight like that. So just be wary of that. One, two, and three and then nine single crochets, and then three more of those slip stitches. I'm gonna go ahead and finish up these next, uh, this round and the next round off camera since you have already seen it. It's three slip stitches, nine single crochets, three slip stitches. So I'm gonna go ahead and finish this next one up and then I'll be back with our last uh, two rounds of this piece. Okay, so I just have my three slip stitches to finish up uh, our round I believe I'm on round 15 right now. Okay, that is gonna be our last slip stitch for round 16. Now we're on to round 17. For round 17, it's gonna be three slip stitches again. So we're gonna go ahead and pull our stitch marker up. We're gonna start with three slip stitches to get started. It's gonna be one, two, and, whoop, try not to split your arm by accident, there we go, three, and then we're going to do, um, da, 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 and two invisible decreases, so three slip stitches, two invisible decreases, so there's one, and two, and then a single crochet, 
two invisible decreases, one single crochet, then two more invisible decreases, front loop, front loop for our first invisible decrease, and then one more, front loop, front loop, like that. And then finish up with three more slip stitches to get to the end of the round. Now this is gonna bring you down four stitches from our 15 stitch count. So this is gonna bring us down to 11 stitches around, which is what our stitch count should be at the end of this round, which is right. Let's see, yeah, there we go. Like that, okay. And now we're on to our very last round, round 18. I'm actually not gonna pull our stitch marker up, so it's a little easier to remove in a second. But for our final round, round 18, we're going to do three slip stitches and an invisible decrease, a single crochet, another invisible decrease, and then finish up with our last three slip stitches. So three slip stitches, starting right here. It's gonna be one, two, and three. We don't need to worry about crocheting these too tightly anymore because we're not gonna to need to use them anymore. So three slip stitches, one invisible decrease, one single crochet like normal, one more invisible decrease, and then finally three slip stitches to get to the end of the round. Will be one, two, and then finally uh, will be three. Now you should have nine stitches around when you look at the top there. You can see we got just a little tiny hole and that's gonna be for the neck of our turtle. Now to finish up our body, we need to cut the yarn. You do not need a very long end. This is more than we need actually. We'll pull it through and we're just gonna hide this end on the inside. Um, actually, first I'm gonna remove our stitch marker just so it's not in our way and we don't accidentally pull out what we're about to hide. The unfortunate thing is our stitch marker is actually really difficult to pull out with our slip stitches because of the way it knots the stitch marker in. This should be it. There we go. Okay. Let's go ahead and fix our little stitch markers here. There we go. And then the last thing is to hide this end in. To hide the end, just thread it onto your needle. Go into the back loop of the next slip stitch across right here just the back of it like this, and make sure you're into both loops. Pull it through, like that. And then we're going to go back into the center of where this end is coming out, like this, and then into the back of a few stitches here. Now the goal here is we wanna to try to get into the back of as many stitches as we can as we hide this into the body. So what I kinda of do is I kinda of just like See my crochet hook kind of wiggling my way across here. I'm just kind of like finding my way through a bunch of stitches. So I'm in the center of just a bunch of stitches put together. And then I'm gonna finish up by pulling pretty much anywhere on the inside, just so we can knot it or, or cut it close. Let's cut it nice and close here. And then there we go. Now, you don't actually wanna stuff this at all. I'm just gonna use my crochet hook to kind of inflate it a little bit. And the reason we don't wanna stuff it is because there's gonna be a head that's gonna go into here. So you actually don't need it stuffed at all. The head itself, like the neck, gets stuffed in. Okay, so let's look at this body from different angles. So you can kinda of see how we have a little bit of shaping here from our slip stitches and increasing and decreasing. There it is from the bottom. There it is from the side. Go ahead and fix our little stitch markers there. There, I'll look at it this way. There's it from the side. There it is from the bottom. Here it is from this side. And then here's the front. And here's the top. All right, so that's gonna be how to make the body and the legs. Next up, we can make the head. 
All right, so we're gonna start with our green yarn and we're actually gonna start it the exact same way as we started uh, the legs. So I'll just go ahead and get it started here with our magic loop. And we're gonna start with round one of the head being six single crochets into the center of your magic loop. So just six single crochets into the center of our magic loop and we'll grab our stitch marker and keep going. Now the, the head here is a little bit more simple than the rest of the parts of the body. Um, we are gonna be working our back loop only working around thing that we did uh, for our legs, but honestly, I truly think that the head is um, one of the easier parts of this pattern. Okay, so we're gonna go ahead and pull our stitch marker through this and pull it nice and tight around our stitch marker there. Perfect, get our crochet hook back in and we'll fold our stitch marker over. All right, so that's gonna be the end of round one. For round two, um, we're actually kinda of gonna get back into the normal groove of amigurumi here. We're gonna do an increase into each stitch around to increase up from six stitches to 12 stitches around. So we're gonna go wiggle our way into that first one, and we're just gonna do an increase into every single one of these stitches. So there's one and two into the same stitch. Notice how I'm working around my tail end as I go around. Uh, and that's gonna be important because we actually are gonna cut the tail end short for the head. And I'm just doing an increase in each stitch. So there's one, two, three, four. Here's five and six. Now, as we go around, because we're putting two stitches into every single crochet that we made in our last round, round we're gonna be going from six stitches up to 12 stitches around. So we're gonna have 12 stitches at the end of this round. At the end of this round. Sounded like a Mortal Kombat announcer or something. All right, <laughs> that was a weird reference, but if you know it, let me know. All right, so these are gonna be our last stitches here. One and, oops, two in the same stitch. All right, so you should have 12 stitches around now, and that should pull our tail end pretty securely. So we can actually go ahead, I'm just gonna go ahead and cut it pretty short. So we don't need it anymore. We don't want it to get in our way. And pull our stitch marker up and we'll continue on to round three. And actually for the next four rounds, so that's gonna be rounds three, four, five, and six. Four rounds in a row, four. We're going to just be doing a single crochet into each stitch around. So nice and easy, just one single crochet for every stitch around. And uh, that's gonna be it. 12 stitches per round for four rounds in a row. And this is my quick plea. If you haven't yet, please like this video down below. It's a great way to get this channel um, noticed by other people. And uh, yeah, it's totally free to do. So go ahead and like this video down below. Subscribe to the channel if you don't already, if you aren't already subscribed. Um, we do live crochet alongs all the time. So that's another great way to support the channel. And uh, if you really, really like what's going on here, uh, I highly suggest donating uh, to download this PDF. If you haven't already downloaded this PDF, uh, check out our other PDFs uh, for our World Wildlife Fund fundraisers. Um, I do, we do a new one like this every year and we have a whole bunch of patterns for this collaboration. And every one of these patterns are full support. 100% um, of the proceeds to all the purchases of all the patterns go to the World Wildlife Fund. So it's extremely supportive. Uh, for the cause, a good cause, and uh, you also get a bunch of really cool patterns out of it. Um, yeah, I just highly suggest checking that out or just donating on the side of this video. That also goes a long way. Um, but yeah, thanks so much for watching. All right, so I've got two more rounds here of single crochets to do, so I'll go ahead and do that really quick, and I'll be right back. Okay. And that's gonna be my last single crochet for round six uh, and our four rounds of just single crochets around and you kind of see our little head coming together. Our face is gonna be right around here somewhere. But we got a few more rounds to do before we get to that. And speaking of, let's move on to round seven. For round seven, we're going to just do two single crochets like normal, one and two, and then an invisible decrease. So we're gonna go front loop only like that, and then another front loop right here. Oops, like this, there we go. And then a single crochet. 
There we go. So two single crochets, one invisible decrease, and then eight more single crochets to get to the other uh, to the end of the round. This is going to bring us down from 12 stitches, which is what we should have had at the end of the last round, down to 11 stitches, which is what we'll have at the end of this round, because we only did one invisible decrease. And we're using that invisible decrease to start shrinking the head down to a really skinny little end so that it fits really easy into the body. And because we'll be doing all of our invisible decreases on the same side, our body will naturally start to turn. But we're also going to be doing that little um, angling thing that we did in our feet so that we can get some extra angle to our piece. And we're gonna do that with the start of our next round. So, pull our stitch marker up, that's the end of round seven. And for round eight, we're going to start by doing seven single crochets to get to where we want to do our back loop only trickaroo. So that's seven single crochets, one, two, three, four, five, six, and seven. And then working into the back loops only for the next three stitches, we're just going to do a slip stitch for three stitches in a row. So three slip stitches working to the back loops only. And don't forget, slip stitches, not single crochets. So we got one, here's two, one more right here will be three. And then to finish up round eight, we're just going to do one single crochet into our last stitch right there. Okay, now we're gonna use these back loops only for round nine, but before we get to round nine, we wanna add our face. So we're gonna go ahead and pull our stitch marker up here and add the face. The face is going to go into round three, and let's start by getting our safety eyes. We're gonna be using six millimeter safety eyes for this face. There's one and two. And we'll of course need the backs. Okay, now normally I do try to add the smile before I add the eyes. Um, in this case, I'm gonna add the eyes first because I know exactly where I wanna add the smile. So we're gonna start by adding the safety eyes. The safety eyes are going to go into round three into stitches one and stitches five. So if I turn it upside down here, we can see where that's gonna be. Round three is gonna be one, two, and this one is gonna be the start of round three. We want stitches one and five. So that would be right, I believe that'd be like right here for a first stitch and, and stitch five. One, two, one, two, three, four. This would be stitch five, like that. Okay, once they're into those stitches, we'll go ahead and lock them into place in the back with these little back locking things. That's kind of hard to see in there. You kind of see the back just way in there. I'm just gonna work my way in with my finger to find the back and then lock it into place there you can kind of see it there we go there's one eye locked into place and the other one that was which one did I lock this one so we need to lock the other one so we're gonna try to lock the other one into place hopefully we don't accidentally lock the stitch marker but I think we'll be all right Oops. There, you can kind of see it. And one, two, three, nice. All right, so that's going to be where I like to add the eyes. Now there's a bunch of ways you can customize these eyes. By the way, I have a whole video tutorial where I show a bunch of ways to customize eyes. So if you want to check that out, I'll put a link somewhere around here or just check out um, five ways to customize your safety eyes. That should be my video. All right, next up, we want to add the mouth, and we're going to be using our black thread for this. We'll just thread one side of this black thread. And the smile's actually not too tough. The first thing you want to do is with your black, whoop, with your black thread on your needle, you want to exit, 
There we go. Exit from the inside, just one stitch away from either one of the eyes, like this. Just one stitch away. And we're gonna go all the way across to the one stitch away from the other eye, so just like this. This is gonna create a little line on the front of the face. Boom, so now he's kind of a bored turtle, but we wanna make our turtle smiling, although that actually does look pretty cute. <laughs> that would be a pretty cute thing to do. Or we could do like a fat face or something, but let's just do a simple smile instead. So after you go across, then you wanna come out with the, uh, the needle right in the center of the stitch in between the lines. So that's gonna be like right there. You wanna come up directly through the center of that stitch right in between the smile or in between the line like this. Try not to work around your stitch marker, which we're about to do. So we're gonna make sure that the stitch marker is on the right side of this. There we go. Pull that through. Now we're gonna go around the bar itself like this, and then back into the same stitch you just worked into, like that. And this is gonna pull the the line down into a smile shape. It'll actually pull it into a V, and then we're gonna just shape it into a smile. So it's gonna pull it deep down into a V like that. And now we can just double knot the two ends of our yarn. I mean, our thread. Take these two ends, we'll just double knot them together. I actually have way more black thread than I'll need. So we're gonna go one. And just kind of guide it with your finger so that it's all the way knotted all the way to the end of the mouth. One, and here is two. Guide it up there. You want it to be a relatively tight knot, but you don't want it like pulling the face in either. And we'll just cut it nice and close. All right. Get the thread out of there. There we go. Okay, and that's gonna be how to add our little face and our little smile. Isn't that cute? It actually did a really, really good smile right first try. Sometimes it makes it into a bit of a V and you need to use your needle to kind of make it and guide the smile into more of a smile shape. But this one actually worked perfectly first try. That's pretty lucky. All right, let's get back to our piece. Um, I believe we just finished round eight, so we can continue on to round nine. There we go. We'll pull our stitch marker up here and continue on to round nine. For round nine, we're going to do one single crochet and then two invisible decreases. Then we'll do two more single crochets and then we're going to work into the front loops only from the last round that we didn't work into to give our piece a guidance, like a curve for three single crochets and then we'll do one more single crochet into our last stitch right there but let's go ahead and do that one stitch at a time. So it's gonna be first one single crochet, and then two invisible decreases. So we're gonna go front loop only, front loop only, and pull through, pull through. And then another invisible decrease. So there's one invisible decrease. Here's our second one. And then we'll do two more single crochets just both loops, single crochets, one and two. And now working into these bars, working over the last round and into the next round right here, we're gonna do th three single crochets into those bars, one, two, and three, and then we'll do a regular single crochet into both loops of this last stitch. So again, I like to get my hook out a little bit so I can get right under where that first bar is and then poke my crochet hook through like that and then pull the loop back to tight. And we'll do a single crochet. So there's one single crochet, two, and there it is. Three single crochets. And then working into both loops for our last stitch right here is one last single crochet. And I should have nine stitches around at the end of the round. So if you wanna count your stitches around, okay. Pull our stitch marker up 
and continue on to round 10. Round 10, we're going to do one single crochet. Start with just one simple single crochet. Go loop tighter. And then one invisible decrease. So we're going to go front loop, front loop, single crochet for our first invisible decrease there. And then we want three more single crochets under both loops, like normal. There's one, two, and three. And then back loops only two, sing two slip stitches. So only in the back loop. Again, just like how we were doing before, just this loop furthest away from us. So one and two back loops, slip stitches. Poke straight through the top like this to get through that back loop. There's one slip stitch and Oops, get our stitch marker out there a little bit. There's our second slip stitch. Finally, we're gonna do under both loops, one last single crochet to finish up round 10. And now, because we only did one invisible decrease, but we did do a decrease, we should be down to eight stitches around if you wanna count your stitches. Pull our stitch marker up and continue on to round uh, 11. For round 11, we're going to do one single crochet just one, then an invisible decrease. So front loop and front loop. The second front loop here, I'm definitely gonna use my nail to help guide my crochet hook in there because it was kind of tough to get into. And then our invisible decrease. This is when it's gonna get a little bit harder because it's getting so tiny. So after you do that invisible decrease, we want two more single crochets. Just both loop single crochets, so we're going one, Notice I'm under both of these loops at the same time. There's two. And now we're gonna work over and into the under, the front loops only that we didn't use. So we're gonna go one and two right there. We're gonna do single crochets into those front loops. Get my crochet hook out a little bit to get more room. Under that first front loop, pull a little tighter. We'll do single crochet one. And then to the next one right here, might need my nail to help get my crochet hook, oopsies, under that. There we go. Two single crochets. And then finally into both loops for our last stitch right before that stitch marker. Notice how I jabbed right into that, right like that. And then we're just gonna do one regular single crochet into that last stitch. And that should be the end of round 11. Now you should have seven stitches around as you look at the top there. So you can really see how we have pulled it really in and now we only have seven single crochets around to work with. We're gonna be continuing this stitch count for the majority of the rest of this pattern until we get to the end, but it's gonna create a really skinny long neck that we're gonna be able to shove right into the neck, uh, right into the body rather, so that he's, his neck can be pulled in and out of the body. Okay. Let's continue on. Get my crochet hook in there. That was, I believe, round 11. So now we're on to round 12. For round 12, we're going to pull our stitch marker up and we're going to do four single crochets, regular old single crochets. So there's one, two, three, Oops, should under both those loops there. There's four, four single crochets is normal. And then back loop only, slip stitch two. So back loop only, slip stitch two. Boom, from the top like this. Oops, kind of hard to get into that one now. Boom, from the top, there we go. So slip stitch into that back loop only. So we go one and two like that. There's one slip stitch. And here is our, oopsies. See this one, I don't think I got under all of that back loop. Oh yeah, actually, yeah, I did. There's our second slip stitch. And then our last one right here, just gonna be one regular single crochet into that last stitch to finish up round 12. Get our stitch marker over 
and continue on to round 13. For round 13, it's going to be relatively straightforward. Four single crochets and then WO work over for two single crochets. So there's one, two, and then one regular single crochet. One, two, three, and four regular single crochets into both loops. And then we're back to these front loop only stitches. So we want to do two single crochets working over. So there's one and two into those ones. One and two. Again, those ones are hard to get into. So what I do is pull my stitch out. We get into position and under that first front loop. Then pull the loop tighter and do our single crochet. So there's one. And next one right here. I pull tighter. There's two. And then finally, one more single crochet into our last stitch right here. To finish up round 13. Okay, now before we continue on to round 14, we do want to stuff this head up a little bit. It's easiest to stuff it right now. So we're going to take our stick. Um, I Again, I suggest using a stick or a pencil to do this part a little bit easier. We're just going to guide stuffing all the way up the head. And we want this head pretty, pretty well stuffed. So we're going to grab a pretty good amount of stuffing. I mean, we don't need to go crazy with it, but we definitely want it stuffed up as much as we can right now because we're not going to be able to come back and stuff it up again later. It's going to be very difficult too because it's going to get so far away from the end of the neck because we still have a pretty good amount of neck still to make and you can kind of see how it's going to make the head really long. So we're going to get the rest of this stuffing in here. There we go. Let's go ahead and squish that a little bit. I think it could still use a little bit more right in the bottom there. Let's grab just a bit more. There we go. Get all that fluff and stuff in there. Perfect. Okay. I think just a little bit more stuffing right here in the neck would be really nice. So let's go ahead and do that too. Again, just because it's going to be a little bit more difficult to do later than it will just to take care of it now. All right, that's pretty good. Okay, so let's continue on to our piece uh, and continue on to round 14. Get our crochet hook in here, maybe. There we go. All right, pull our stitch marker up and continue on to round 14. Now for round 14, uh, we're going to do five single crochets and then our back loops only two slip stitches. So five single crochets, just like normal one, two, three, four, five, and then back loops only slip stitch two for our last two stitches. Kind of hard to see where those are, but they're right here. Poking straight down like that. There's one slip stitch and right here. There we go. That's our second slip stitch. All right, and that's going to be the end of round 14. Pull our stitch marker up, continue on to round 15. Round 15, we're just doing five single crochets. And then we're going to do our work over for our last two single crochets. So five regular single crochets. One. Two. Three. There's four. And five single crochets. And now working over and into those unused front loops only from the previous round, that's going to be all the way down here. It's kind of hard to get to these ones, but right there and right there, we're just going to do single crochets into those last two front loops only. Pull my stitch marker out, or I mean my loop out to get more movement and get into position like so. Pull through and then pull it tight. There's one single crochet and under the next one right there. Ooh, getting aggressive with it. <laughs> and then 
two single crochets, and that'll be the end of round uh, 15. You can see how it's really giving a curve to our neck. See how it's giving that this natural curve because we're doing all these? That's gonna be really nice because then it'll, in the body, it'll be actually like looking forward, which is the goal. You know, we don't want it straight like this. We want it curved. Okay, pull our stitch marker up and continue on to round 16. And actually for the next two rounds, 16 and 17, it's just single crochets around. So it's, you should have still just seven stitches around, but just two rounds of just single crochets is actually a really, really nice break uh, for this piece in my opinion. So I'm just gonna do two rounds of just single crochets really quick. We might need to pull our stitch marker up in just a second as well. Two more. One. And two. It's gonna be our first single crochet, uh, technically round 16 there. Pull my stitch marker up here. I'm just gonna go ahead and before I do round 17 really quick, um, I'm just gonna get this stitch marker out a little bit so that we have a little bit more room to uh, work with later. <laughs> Looks kind of funny there. Looks like he's got like a funny comb over. <laughs> Oopsies, I pulled the full stitch marker out, so we're gonna have to get it started up again. That's all right though. Okay, we're just gonna crochet around our stitch marker for our next stitch to get it started again. Okay, so uh, I have one more round here of just single crochets, so we'll go ahead and just do one round of single crochets here. This is uh, round 17 still. Okay, three more stitches. One. Oopsies. Two. Last one will be right here. And three. Okay. Pull that through and go ahead and we'll just stuff this tail end just a little bit so it's out of our way a little as we continue on to round 18. Round 18 we're actually going to increase it up a little bit so we're going to do six single crochets and then in our last stitch right here we're going to do our last increase and that's going to bring us up to eight stitches uh, from seven which is what we currently have. So that's six single crochets regular one, two, three, four, five, and six. And then finally an increase into this last stitch right here to go up to eight stitches around. So that's gonna be one and two in the same stitch. Pull our stitch marker up and continue on to round 19. For round 19, we're going to increase up to 12 stitches around. To do that, we're going to do a single crochet into our first stitch and then an increase into our next and repeat that four times total. So that's going to be one single crochet into our first right here, single crochet one, and then increase one into the next. One and two in the same stitch. One single crochet, one increase, four times in a row. So let's do our second repeat because that was our first. One single crochet, one increase, one and two. Okay, just a few more. One single crochet, and then one increase, one and two. And then finally, one more repeat of that, one single crochet, 
and then one last increase right here. One and two. All right, so that's gonna be 12 stitches around now. You can see how we're making it just come out a little bit, and that's gonna be because this is gonna hold it into the body when we stuff it into the body later. All right, very last round. Um, I, yeah, okay, we'll pull our stitch marker up. For our very last round here, we're just going to do an invisible decrease in each stitch around. That's gonna be six invisible decreases total. So we're gonna go front loop only, one and two like that, and do a single crochet like so. There's one and two, looking for six of these. There's three, Whew. that one was tough for some reason. And there's four. There's five. And then one last one right here. Front loop only and front loop only for a final Oh, there we go. Invisible decrease. All right. That's going to be one, two, three, four, five, six. Cut the yarn. You do not need a very long end at all. That's just going to be for sewing it closed. And then pull it all the way out like that. Let's pull our stitch marker out really quick. And then before we sew it closed, we do want to stuff it up. Right now, I can feel that the stuffing is only really to right here. So we want to make sure all this has a little bit, just a little tiny bit of stuffing. And I really do mean just a little bit. You really do not want to overstuff the neck uh, because it'll be really hard to get in and out of the body if you're not careful. So go ahead, we're just going to stuff all this into the body. and Just make sure that you have it pretty like evenly distributed there. So I can feel, I got a little bit, I actually want a little bit more right there. Like that, yes, yes, yes. All right, just a bit more to get into this part. You can see how it's all flattened there. That all needs a little bit of stuffing too. There's one little bit right there. And we'll go ahead and see what happens when we put all this in there. Oh, we'll leave the rest of this right at the end here. Yeah, that feels pretty good. Okay, so the final thing we want to do is just sew this bottom closed. We're going to take our end, thread it onto our needle, and if you don't know how to sew closed, it's actually pretty easy. You just thread it onto a needle, and then you work the needle into each of the front loops around. So we're just going to go under this front loop only, like this, under all of them. So we're just gonna go one, two, three, there should be six, four, there's five, and then one last one right here, probably six, and then you hold it down, pinch it right at the end, and then just pull it tight, and it'll close it all up. Now take this end, go straight through the center, and then I kind of try to find some back loops as I go in to hide it, but really our goal is just to come out through some stitch on the neck. Like that, put it nice and tight. And I always like to squish this end because we do want this end to be bigger than the rest of it. See, so it's got something to hold on to on the inside of the body. So I always try to like push the stuffing into the back right here and just kind of like squish it down a little bit so it's got more of a lip. So it's got something to hold on to in the body. That's pretty good, actually. I think that'll be enough. Um, if you are a little worried about that, just really kind of squish it down or stuff it, stuff it as much as you can by like squishing the stuffing from here so that it squishes back into the back. But that should be fine. All right, now we're just gonna cut this end nice and close. You do not need a long end at all. Like that. And there we go, we've got our head made. So now we have pretty much all the parts of the body made. We've got all of our legs, we've got the body itself, and of course, now we have the head. And the last thing we need to make are our bits of shell before we sew it all together. So we're gonna start by making the bottom shell, and then the top, 
and then we'll make, uh, we'll put everything together. All right. Okay, so next up, we're going to be making the bottom shell. Uh, we're going to be making the top and the bottom, obviously, but we're going to start with the bottom. We're going to be using our beige yarn for this. Uh, we're going to start with the magic loop like we have before, but this round is going to be using um, half double crochets instead of single crochets. So I'll be going through a little bit more detail for this section, just, just, a, just a little bit. All right, so we're gonna start with round one of the bottom shell. We're going to chain two. Now this first chain that we made for our, our uh, magic loop counts as our first chain. So we're just going to chain one more than that. So there's one, two chains. And we're going to start, uh, we're gonna count that as our first half double crochet. And then we're going to half double crochet 11 more times into the magic loop so that there is 12 half double crochets total. And I do quotations like that because this first one counts as a half double crochet, but it's not really half double crochet. So we're gonna do 11 additional half double crochets into the magic loop. For a half double crochet, we're going to yarn over, go into the stitch, yarn over again with the end attached to the ball, Pull that through the stitch, being the magic loop in this case, and then yarn over again and pull through all three loops on the hook with a scoop to help get through those stitches a little bit easier. That's going to be half double crochet. We're going to do 11 of those, 11 additional ones. So there's one and two, three, four. Five. And the interesting thing here is it's going to be kind of hard to six, close this up afterwards, seven. So I'm going to close it a little bit right now, just a little bit. So we still have room to work with, um, but it'll make it our lives a little bit easier in just a second. So it's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, and then one last one right here for... 11 additional half double crochets. Now we're gonna pull this tight. Uh, before I do that though, um, I guess we can grab a stitch marker. There's only really three rounds in this, but you know, I'd rather be safe than sorry. So we're gonna go ahead and pull that stitch marker through like that. And we're gonna pull this tail end nice and tight to close it in. Just be very careful you don't pull it so tight that you break the yarn. Uh, you do not wanna break the yarn. Okay, and then we'll pull our stitch marker here up. And we're also going to be crocheting around our tail end for our next round, but we can actually continue on to round uh, two now. For round two, we're gonna start by slip stitching into the first chain to connect. Um, it's gonna be right here. It's actually kind of hard to see where the first chain is, but it's gonna be right there. So we wanna start by slip stitching into that chain just to connect the circle to get us started. So slip stitch one there. Then we're going to chain two, one and two. And we're gonna actually count that as our half double crochet. And then we're going to start by half double crocheting one time into the same stitch that you just slip stitched into. So we're gonna yarn over. I'm gonna to try to take my tail end here and place it over so that we work around this tail end as we go, just so we can lock it into place and hide it as we're going instead of doing it at the end. So we're gonna start by half double crocheting into the same stitch that you just slip stitch into, so right there. And I'm gonna make sure my tail end is over my yarn, pull it through, yarn over, and pull through all three. That's for our first half double crochet. Now for the remainder of the stitches around, we're gonna be working into both loops and we're going to, going to be doing a half double crochet increase into each of the remaining, remaining stitches. So a half double crochet increase just basically means we're gonna do two half double crochets into every one of the remaining stitches around. We're gonna have 24 stitches total at the end of this round. So we're going up from 12, which is what we had last round, up to 24, but um, that first chain counts as our first uh, half double crochet. So technically we've already made two, one and two. So we're gonna keep doing that around. So yarn over for half double crochet. We're gonna go into the next stitch. You wanna make sure you're under both loops of the next stitch, so just like that. Then yarn over again, pull through. I'm gonna keep working around our tail end just for a few more stitches. And then yarn over and pull through all three for a half double crochet. And like I said, it's gonna be a half double crochet increase. So we're gonna do another half double crochet into the same stitch here, like 
So, and we're gonna count that as our fourth stitch. So there's one, two, three, four. And we'll keep doing that around all the way till we get to the end of the round and get to 24 stitches. It's gonna be five and six. I don't think we need to work around this too much longer, but maybe for a few more stitches. Seven and eight. Eh, might as well make it to the end of the round now. Nine and 10. Just really make sure this tail end is locked into place. Okay, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, and 12. So halfway there, living on a prayer. Just a few more though. One and two. What I really like about the bottom of our shell here is that because we're using our different kind of stitch, it does kind of differentiate it from the rest of the body which is kind of the goal. We do something, I guess, somewhat similar for the top of the shell to create the segments of the shell, um, but unfortunately the stitches are all single crochets for the top shell, so it's not gonna look as different. All right, let's count our stitches. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 21, 22. All right, two more right here. 23, I'm gonna go ahead and leave that out and 24. All right, let me cut this tail end nice and short. Like this. We don't need this tail end at all. And then we'll pull our stitch marker up like so, and then continue on to round three, which is actually gonna be our last round in our piece. For round three, it's gonna be kind of weird. We're gonna basically be making gears. It kind of looks like gears for this piece. Um, to do that, we're gonna start into our first chain that we made in our first round right here. And we're gonna go ahead and slip stitch two stitches. So we're gonna slip stitch one to our first chain that we made like that. And then slip stitch one into the next stitch right here. Okay, so we slip stitch two, one and two. And then we're going to do the following uh, into the next stitch. We're gonna do one slip stitch into the next stitch. We're gonna chain one and then half double crochet into that same stitch that you just slip stitched into. So yarn over into the same stitch, pull through, yarn over and pull through all three. Okay. That's our first stitch there. And then the next stitch over right here, we're gonna do the same thing backwards. So we're gonna do a half double crochet one, chain one, and then slip stitch one into that same stitch like that. And that is gonna be the repeat that we're going to do all the way around. So it's gonna be two slip stitches and then our slip stitch one, chain one, half double crochet one, and then half double crochet one, chain one, slip stitch one, and then repeat that all the way around. So that's our first repeat. We wanna do six repeats total, which is gonna create, like I said, like kind of like, looks like a bit of a gear. So let's go ahead and do our second repeat here. Slip stitch two, one, and two. And then into our third, into our next stitch, we're going to slip stitch one, Not gonna thread the yarn. Fix that. There we go. Okay, so slip stitch one, chain one, and then half double crochet into the same stitch. And then the other, and then that same thing backwards in the next stitch. So half double crochet one, chain one, slip stitch one. Pretty good though. Look at that. Looks nice. So these are gonna be where our heads, like the head's gonna go in between this one and then there's gonna be these little notches basically. All right, let's keep doing that repeat. This is our third repeat, slip stitch two. And then the next one, we'll slip stitch one, chain one and half double crochet. And then backwards. And the next stitch, half double crochet one, chain one and slip stitch one. All right, 
repeat again. This is our, I believe our fourth. Well, yeah, of course it's our fourth because we have three gears so far. So it's one and two. And then in the third, we slip stitch, chain one, half double crochet, and then half double crochet, chain one, slip stitch one. All right, there's four of our gears. Two slip stitches. In the next stitch, we slip stitch one, chain one, half double crochet. And then in the next stitch over, half double crochet, chain one, slip stitch one. These are actually shockingly fun to make. <laughs> All right, next one. Last repeat, slip stitch two, one and two. And then next stitch, slip stitch one, chain one, half double crochet one. And then into our final stitch here, half double crochet one, whoop, chain one, and then slip stitch one into that same stitch. All right. We'll pull our stitch marker out here. Don't need that. We'll come back to that for our next part. And then all we need to do is cut the yarn. You do want somewhat of a, and you like about like that long is fine. We're gonna be using this to double knot together to the other end when we sew everything together. So we're gonna go ahead and pull that through just like that. And then we're gonna go into the same stitch that you just worked into and pull that through like that. So you just wanna hide it into that last stitch there. And that's gonna be all you need to do to make the bottom of your shell. This is gonna be obviously sewn to the top of the shell later on. Let's go ahead and get a good look at it. Just really quick. I'll hold it like this maybe. So we can really get a good look at it. At it. All of these stitches, we're gonna call these the crests in the pattern. All these stitches are gonna be sewn to the top shell in a little bit. Okay, so speaking of, let's go ahead and get started on the top of our shell. Okay, so for the top of the shell, we're gonna be using our brown yarn and we're gonna start with our magic loop like we have done before. And actually the start of this is gonna be pretty self-explanatory um, because we have actually done this before. So we're gonna start by single crocheting uh, six times into the magic loop, just like how we've done on the legs and the head and all that kind of stuff. So just six single crochets into the magic loop to get started. In fact, round one and two are gonna be uh, very similar to the head. One, two, three, four, five, and six. Pull this a little tighter. Let's get our stitch marker in here. I cut us a new piece of yarn for it because our last one was getting a little threaded and pull it nice and tight. Okay, and we'll fold our stitch marker over. Um, I think this is actually way too long of a stitch marker, so let's go ahead and trim it down a little bit. Okay, pull our stitch marker over and we'll continue on to round two. For round two of our back shell, we're going to do an increase into every single stitch around up to, from six stitches up to 12. So two single crochets into every stitch. First one's always the tough one to get into. Like that. And we're gonna work around our tail end for all of our stitches here just to lock it into place and then cut it short because we won't really need it for sewing together. So we're just gonna go ahead and do an increase into every stitch around. So there's one and two. And like I said, this is the exact same as the head. So this shouldn't be new uh, stitches to you. You should recognize these. One, two, one, and two. And you should have 12 of these as we work our way around. Vocal fry, oh, way oh, around. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Uh, just a few more. Nine. And 10. And then our last ones here, 11 and 12. 
that will be the end of round two. I'll go ahead and cut our tail end here nice and short. We do not need it. We'll be using our other tail end for sewing together later on. Okay, next up, we're on round three. Let's pull our stitch marker up. For round three, we're gonna be increasing up to 18 stitches around. To do that, we're going to do one single crochet into our first stitch and then an increase into our next stitch and repeat that process six times total all the way around our piece. So we're gonna do one single crochet into our first stitch and then an increase into our next one and two and then repeat that process all the way around. This will bring us up from 12 stitches up to 18 stitches around. So we'll have 18 at the end of round three here. Pretty easy. This is what I'm used to for Amigurumi. It's funny, when I did this pattern, um, I'm currently like pretty stressed because I've been doing a lot of patterns for our first uh, photosynthesis crochet kit. And so in the, I was like, okay, I let's do a pattern for the endangered creatures uh, uh, collaboration that we do. What am I going to do? Oh, I know I'll do a turtle. Oh, I know I'll make it one of the most complicated patterns I've ever done before. So <laughs> this is one of the most complicated patterns. And uh, it's funny that under a time crunch, I decided to do the most complicated pattern ever. Um, but I love it so much. It's so cool. Okay. So that's the end of round three. We're going to pull our stitch marker up here and continue on to round four. Round four is going to be very similar to round three, but this time we're going to do two single crochets between increases. So two single crochets, then an increase, repeated six times around. And that's what round, uh, what am I on to say? Round four. And round four is going to bring us up from 18 stitches, which is what we currently have, up to uh, 24 stitches around. So you'll have 24 stitches at the end of this round here. So again, that's two single crochets and then an increase. I'm doing our second repeat here because you want six repeats of that total. Two single crochets, and then our increase. Do another repeat, one and two, and then our increase here. One, two. One, two, increase. One and two. Last two repeats. Like I said, you should have 24 stitches at the end of this round. One, two, and then our final one, and four. Okay, and that'll be the end of round four. Now for round five, it's gonna actually be a pretty easy round for round five. We're only gonna be working into the back loops of all of our stitches around, so we're not working under both loops like we were before, like this. Instead, this time we're only working under boop, the back loop of all the stitches around. This is gonna create a little, um, we're gonna start creating uh, some, here, let me show you on the finished thing. We're gonna start creating like basically a little ledge here that we're gonna work around to create some detail. Uh, and then these are, these lines are gonna be added after the fact. So, We'll do that by working into the back loops only for an entire round here. And this time we're only doing single crochets. So just one whole round of just single crochets, but working into the back loops only to create this line on the top. So just 24 stitches, all single crochets worked into the back loops only. Oops, messed that one up. Let's try that one again. There we go. There we go. Man, I got a lot of vocal fry today. A lot of vocal fry today, dude. That's probably what Tuck the Turtle, Tuck the Giant Tortoise sounds like. Hey, dude. Hey, by the way, if you haven't yet, like and subscribe. Or as Tuck the Tur Tortoise might say, like and subscribe, dude. <laughs> ah, crazy all right so we're coming up to the end of our round here it's going to be the end of round five and just a few more stitches one two and three okay pull our stitch marker up we'll continue on to round six 
And now you can kind of see how it's going to create that little line there that we'll be using later on. All right, for round six, we're going to do three single crochets. We can work into both loops now. We'll do three single crochets and then an increase repeated six times around, going up from 24 stitches up to 30 stitches. So that's going to be one, two, and three regular single crochets, and then an increase after that right here, four and five. And then repeat that six times total. Going all the way around our piece. This is gonna bring you up from 24 stitches up to 30 stitches around. So you can see we're getting more and more stitches as we make our top of our shell here so that we can fit the entire body in here. One, two, three, and then four and five. One, two, three, and then four. Get a little bit more yarn. Oops. Got some of our beige yarn. Wants to get involved, so we gotta untangle some yarn real quick. It's like, I'm not done being used yet. You know how beige yarn talks. Classic beige yarn move. All right, back to it. Do an increase into this one. Just a few more repeats here. One, two, and three, and then our increase. Five. Last repeat, one, two, there we go, three, and then our final increase right here, four and five. Okay, we'll pull our stitch marker up, get a little bit more yarn, and continue on to round seven. For round seven, we're going to do four single crochets and then an increase, repeating that six times around, going up from 36, 30 stitches to 36 stitches around. So that's one, two, three, four single crochets, and then our increase after it right here, five and six. And then we'll just repeat that all the way around. One, two, this is our second repeat, three, four single crochets, and then an increase, one and two in the same stitch. All right, and that's it. That's a nice easy round, nice easy round. We're gonna get a little bit more complicated after this, but we're actually almost done with all of the crocheting um, just a few more rounds and then we can sew everything together and the sewing together in this pattern is really fun actually I, I really really like the sewing together part because it's very different you're not actually sewing the entire body together you're actually just sewing the shell together around the body and uh, yeah it's just it is an interesting way to sew things together that I've never really done before. So it's pretty fun to just experiment and see how I'm gonna do things and just try to like, I don't know, try something new sometimes, especially during these endangered crochet along uh, creatures. They're just fun to experiment with. All right, so that's gonna be the end of round uh, da, 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 seven. Pull our stitch marker up and continue on to round eight. For round eight, we're gonna be adding a little bit of uh, detail here. We're going to do two single crochets and then working into the back loops only, two slip stitches and then two more single crochets. And then we're gonna repeat that process six times total. Uh, and that's gonna create these little lines that we're gonna work into in the next round to create our waves along the top. So that's gonna be two single crochets, one and two. And then working into the back loop only, two slip stitches. So back loops only here, one and two slip stitches, and then two more single crochets, one and two. And we're gonna repeat that all the way around. And notice how that just makes these two lines there. We're gonna be using those in our next round to create um, where the head and stuff is gonna go get tucked into. So let's do that repeat again, two single crochets, one, two, and then front loop only, slip stitch, I mean, sorry, back loop only, slip stitch two, one and two. And then two more single crochets, one and two. 
All right, third repeat, single crochet two, back loop only, slip stitch two, one, and two, and then single crochet two, one, and two. All right, halfway there. You can see it's already starting to create a little bit of a wave, just a bit. Single crochet two, back loop only, slip stitch two, and then single crochet two. Last one, or sorry, last couple. Single crochet two, slip stitch two, back loop only, single crochet two. One, two. Last repeat, single crochet two, both loops for single crochets, back loop only, slip stitch two, one, and two slip stitches in the back loops, and then regular crochet, single crochet, one and two. And that'll be the end of round eight. You should still have 36 stitches around. Okay, so for round nine, we're gonna be doing our final round here to create the rest of our waves. To do that, we're going to work um, actually kind of a weird repeat here. Um, the reason we're gonna be doing this weird repeat is because we're gonna be working into the front loops only for a few stitches, and that's gonna leave their back loops open for sewing together with the bottom shell. So the repeat's gonna be this. Working into the front loop only, we're going to single crochet one. So let's go ahead and get that started. Front loop only, single crochet one. So only in that front loop. Okay, and then slip stitch one as normal, just into both loops, slip stitch one. So front loop only, single crochet one, both loops, slip stitch one. And then working over into this stitch right here, we're going to slip stitch one. So working over, remember how we were doing this for the legs in the back, we're gonna work into those front loops only that we didn't work into last round work over to this front loops only, and we're gonna slip stitch into both of them. So that's gonna be one slip stitch into the first one and two into the next one. And then we're going to do a slip stitch into the next stitch, just as normal under both loops. Slip stitch one, and then finish the repeat by single crocheting into the front loop only of the next stitch right here. So you crochet one and see how that's gonna create our little opening. That's where the head's gonna go and the legs and stuff like that. So we're gonna do that repeat six times total. That was our first repeat. Um, let's go ahead and do it again. Again, that repeat is front loop only, single crochet one. Slip stitch one into both loops as normal. Working over into these top loops, we're gonna slip stitch into each of them. So slip stitch two, there's one. And here's the next one. Slip stitch one into both loops as normal. And then front loop only, single crochet one. And there's your repeat. You see how it's making these, it kind of like have these waves. All right, so that was our second repeat. Let's do another one. Front loop only, single crochet one. Both loops, slip stitch one. Working over, slip stitch two. one and two. Both loops, slip stitch one. Front loop only, single crochet one. And there's your repeat. All right, let's do it a few more times. Single crochet one into the front loop only. Slip stitch one into both loops. Or there we go. Front loop, or working over, slip stitch two, there we go, slip stitch one, and two, both loops slip stitch one, then front lip only, single crochet one. All right, looks like we got two more repeats here. This is our fifth repeat, single crochet one into the front lip only, slip stitch into both loops, Working over, slip stitch two, one, and two, single crochet one, or I'm sorry, slip stitch one to the next, both loops, and then front loop only, single crochet one. 
All right, one last repeat of this. It's gonna be back loop only, or front loop only, single crochet one. Both loops, slip stitch one. Working over, slip stitch two. One and two. Both loops, slip stitch one. And then front loop only, single crochet one. To finish this up, we're going to slip stitch into the last, in the first stitch that we made right here, just slip stitch one. We're gonna cut the yarn. You want a pretty long end here, like, that's probably good. We're gonna be using this, actually, maybe even longer than that. So that's what, how long is this? It's like, here, let's go around our hand to count. Let's see, we want one, two, three, four, Let's go five times around the hand like that. We'll use all this to sew everything together. And we're just gonna pull it through after our slip stitch. Let's pull our stitch marker out like that. And then we'll finish this up by hiding the end into the back loop of the last stitch here. And then we can begin sewing everything together. So we're gonna go into the back loop only of the next slip stitch across right here. Like that. And then we're gonna go into where this end is coming out like this, and then into the back of our first stitch here. Like, let's go like, we'll go like this, just a couple of stitches in. Okay. And then we'll pull everything tight. We want to replicate the slip stitch on the top. So pull it tight enough to make it so that it's invisible to the rest of them. And there we go. That's going to be how to crochet the top of the shell. All right, let's go ahead and put this to the side. We're going to come back to that top shell in just a second, because now we're going to begin the process of sewing everything together. Okay, now the laborious process of sewing everything together. We're gonna start by sewing on the legs to the body to start. Now, luckily we have our stitch markers here to know where to sew them on. But the important thing to note when making the body is that you want them all sewn on so that this is at the like bottom, you know, like it's kind of facing towards the ground a little bit. And so all these legs, like, it wouldn't be sewn on basically, this would be upside down. This is right side up, so that all these are pointing down. And then all of our legs here are gonna be sewn on over where these stitch markers are like this, so that they're facing the ground like so. Okay, now how I do that. First, we're going to make sure that all of the legs are stuffed up. Now I do need to stuff these ones, but I'll do that in just a second. I'd rather just show you how to sew these on first. Now, both of these should have two ends coming out. You should have one tail end coming out from the center and one coming out from the side. We're gonna start by threading the center of this tail end onto our needle like this. And we're going to go ahead and put that exactly where one of these pink stitch markers are gonna be. So I'm gonna go ahead and pull this pink stitch marker out a little bit so that the other one goes away like that. We're gonna go straight into where that was, right here. And I'm just gonna come out somewhere on the back like this. Just, it doesn't really matter where it is. We're gonna use that for double knotting together a little later. Actually, we'll go a little bit closer like that. Okay, and that's gonna be the one that's gonna keep our foot kind of in place. Now, like I said, you want it facing downwards so that the foot is facing towards the ground like this. And now we can thread the other end on our needle the other end of the foot. Okay, so we have eight stitches to work with here around our piece. So what we wanna do is we wanna place it into place like that, like where we're going to want it. And then we wanna find our eight stitches that we're going to be working around where this center one is. So if we start, it looks like if we were to start to make it to the bottom, we would start like right here. So if that's our first one, we wanna count eight around. So we'd probably come out like right here and let's count. We got one, two, and then we go, I'll use my, I'll use this to keep track. We go 
one, two, three, four, five. And then we go across, we go six, seven, and then eight would be right there. So it should be pretty easy to find those eight stitches around. So we're gonna go ahead and start right here with this. We'll pull this other tail end tighter so that everything gets pulled in and it holds its placement a little bit easier. And then we're gonna go around one of the stitches on the edge of the leg, then back in through where we came out, and then out through the next stitch in our eight, like that. Once you get a couple going, a couple of these stitches started, you can actually just like kind of hold it in place and find your spots. So we'll go next stitch here, and then in through the same stitch you're coming out of, and then out through the next stitch around where that center is. You can kind of barely see it right there. Pull tighter. And then next stitch on the leg, into the same stitch, out through the next stitch along. Now, once I get a little bit further like this, I like to count my stitches. So where this end needle is coming out, that's going to be where the next stitch is sewn on. So we've got one, two, three, four, five more stitches to work with. The fifth stitch is going to be the fifth stitch is going to be right here where the the first one was, and then the first one is going to be right here, and we have five to work with. So we'll go one, two. Let's go three, four, and then five will be that last one. That's how, I, that's how I always sew things together. Now, if you want to make these legs posable, now is your chance. You wanna go ahead and shove a pipe cleaner right into here and then into the body. You do wanna make be very careful with pipe cleaners though if you do that because the head is gonna be shoved into the body itself. So you don't wanna add like too many things that the head will get snagged onto. So just be careful if you do end up adding pipe cleaners. Um, yeah, it could just be a, you just gotta be careful. You just gotta be careful. Okay, just a few more. One, two, let's count. We got one, two, three, and we got one, two, three. Here's one. Go back into that one and then come out through the two. Pull tighter and then go into two on the body in through two, out through three. And for our very last one here, we're gonna go around that first stitch into the next one here. And then you wanna come out through where this other tail end is so that we can double knot together to this end, like this. And notice how the foot is gonna be shaped downwards like that. That's pretty good. All right, we're gonna double knot these two together. One, double knot it pretty tight so that it goes into the body a little bit. There's two, we'll cut it really close. You do not need a long end at all here. And then use the back of your needle to shove that knot back into the body and have everything go back to normal. Okay, so that's gonna be how to sew the legs on. I'm gonna go ahead and sew legs on for each of our stitch markers here uh, and then We'll add our head into the hole at the end there, and I'll show you how to do that. It can be a little bit difficult to do, so I'll show you that in just a second. But let me go ahead and sew the rest of these limbs on, and I'll be back in just a moment. Okay, so I'm just going and double knotting my last leg here. Go ahead and cut it nice and close. And I'll stuff this knot back in with the back of my needle. If I can, there we go. All right, so that's gonna be all the legs sewn on. I'm gonna go ahead and open up the body a little bit more. You can see how all the legs are sewn on. Looks pretty good. Yeah, I like those. Okay, so next thing we wanna do is add the head into the hole right here. So we're gonna go ahead and grab our head. This part's actually not too crazy. Um, the trick is you gotta fit this into that hole and obviously it's quite a tight fit and that's kind of the point. 
you don't want to be able to pull the head out once it's in. It's so difficult to get in though that you have to really tweak the head to get it right. So what I like to do is I squish it in half like this and then I'll fold it in half like that. So it's folded and as, oops, and as tiny as I can get it. And then we'll put it into that hole and just twist it in like that. Once it's in there, you wanna squish it on the inside and skew it so that it's back to its normal shape so you can't pull it back out without like really ripping it out. And that's it, like there we go. It's in the body now. And so now you should be able to twist it to help it get into the body a little bit easier. That's as far in as we're gonna be able to get it. Um, if you don't, if you want it to be able to go in and out of the body a little bit easier, just kind of tuck it over and over again and it'll stretch its way in and out. It's always gonna be more easy to pull it out of the head than it is to pull it, push it into the head. You always kind of got to squish it into the head, at least in my opinion, or in my uh, experience, that is the case. Okay, but we have the body all made now. The last thing we want to do is we want to add the shell on the outside because he's looking pretty naky now. But honestly, it, it looks pretty good. It worked. Um, okay, so now we're going to add the body, or the a shell and the shell is going to be added in a very interesting way the first thing we're going to do is we want to add we want to put the bottom of the shell where the bottom of the shell is going to be around the bottom right there and have let's have the front or like the end of the shell or the end of the, the tail end here towards the tail of the body uh, and this is going to be important because we're going to need it to knotting together to the top of the shell later as well so next, uh, we got the bottom of the shell in place. Now we wanna grab the top of our shell and line up the tail end of the top of the shell with where the tail end of the bottom of the shell goes like this. Okay. All right, so the bottom, or the, the shell's gonna be sewn together using all this warm brown yarn from the top of the shell. The first thing that we're gonna do is we're gonna thread it on to our needle and place both shells together over the body, trying to line them up so that the, both the tail ends are lined up. And the crests of each of the shells, that being where the wave crests, where it's like at, at its um, apex here, sewn, is sewn together to the crests of the bottom of the shell. That's gonna be these ones here. So the bottom, at the crests of the top shell, there's gonna be these two back loops right here. One and two. These are gonna be sewn together to our two back loops of the crests of the bottom of the shell here, here, one and two. So that's how everything's gonna get sewn together. In between crests, we're gonna be doing, we're gonna be creating um, some texture at the top. So what we wanna do is we wanna start with this bottom one and we're gonna sew this one to this one. So we're gonna go through this, actually let's go ahead and go through the first, the, unfortunately this first one, it's kind of hard to find where the back loops are for this crest. So we're just gonna go and say, let's see, I think that the first one, I think the first one's right here. Let's look at it again. Yeah, this is one of the back loops and this is one of the back loops. The first one's kind of hard to tell and that's why we're putting it in the back is cause like, so we just, just in case we goof up too bad, but we'll come out through the first back loop like that and then connect to the back loop of our bottom shell and we're going to do that twice we always want to do it twice for the for the shells so we're just going to go one like that and then into the same one and then out through the next back loop like that so you want to do it two times and don't worry see right now it's obviously not on the body we're, let's go ahead and just sew this first one on really quick and then we can add it to the body in just a second. There's one, two, and then we'll go into this next one here. We'll do it twice also. There's one, like that, and then two in the same one, like that. You wanna finish up by coming out through an adjacent stitch on the outside of the shell. Specifically, I like to come out through right here. 
So right there through the center of that stitch. That's where I like to come out of. We'll pull out. Like this. Okay, so that's gonna be one of the crests sewn together. Now we're gonna take this and go up all the way to where our first back loop is on the edge around this. So we're gonna go up, let's see, I think I wanna go, yeah, up from it like that. Just go straight up into it like this. And this is gonna create a vertical bar. And this is gonna start our vertical bar. We're gonna we're going to uh, be working around this vertical bar to make it more um, obvious later. But once you get through the top of the crest like that, you wanna begin winding around the front loops only for four stitches to get to the next corner and to make your next line down to connect to the next crest. Let's go ahead and we'll connect the two first two crests and then we'll put the body into place. So we're gonna go up and start winding around all of these stitches. So we're just gonna go one, that. And this is going to uh, make these lines way more distinct, but also get us into position for our next vertical line. There, and this will be the fourth one. Okay, so like that, that gets us into position for the next vertical line where the next crest is. We're gonna go all the way down and enter into the body or into the top of the shell in the same place. So like right here, either in between this stitch right here. Actually, that's probably good. Let's go in between that stitch right there and we'll come out through the bottom. And then we're gonna come up through one of the two front loops that we're gonna use to sew to the other crest. So right here. And then we're going to sew together to this crest. So we're gonna go up through the top of this next one out through it again, and don't forget, you wanna always double up the crest. So we're gonna go one, and then into it again, and come out through the second part. Two, and then this next crest. Like that. And then into the same one, and then we're gonna come out through where this bar is again. like that. Okay, now we want to go around this bar a bunch. So specifically, I like to go around, let's see, because I want to finish up by coming up through it like that. So I'm going to go around this way. So I'm going to go around this bar like this, and we're just going to wind up it four times. So there's one, two, so notice how I'm pulling it up as I wind it three, do it one more time, and four. Notice how I'm like pulling it up. That's gonna give it more of a good look there. And then we're gonna come up through the front loops only, and then wind our way around to our next vertical bar, where our next vertical bar will be. So there's one. And once we get to this next one, we'll put the body in place, two, three, and four. Okay, so that gets us into position for the next one. Before I continue though, we do wanna work around the legs as we go, cause it's really hard to stuff our body into this. It's easier just to crochet around it. So we're gonna go ahead and put that around the tail like that. There we go. And let's go ahead and shove the body, the head in as far as we can. And then we'll just keep doing as we go, but with the body attached. So next we're gonna come down into the center of our next crest right here. Oops. Right there rather. Okay, we're gonna come up through the back loop on the top shell. 
like we did before, and then sew together with the next crest on the bottom shell right here. And don't forget, we always want to double it up. So we got one, and then two into the same one, and then out through the next one. As long as you're sewing these together the same way, it should look pretty good. One into the same one, and then we want to come out through where huh, our vertical bar is, because we're going to be working around that vertical bar to make it more noticeable like we did before. We're just going to do that all the way around our piece. There we go. You can see how it's getting sewn together now. All right, next vertical bar. We're going, I'm sorry, what was it again? This way, yes. There's one. Two. Three. Four, and then come around and work our way to the next one. One. You see how it's making our design on the top of the turtle as we go. By the way, if you have any questions, let me know in the comments, obviously. One, two, three. And four. Now we're gonna work down to the crest and I'm gonna go ahead and do the rest of these. Just sewing everything together. Um, yeah, because you don't need to see me keep doing this over and over. But if you have any questions, obviously let me know in the comments um, if you're having a hard time with any of this or uh, check out the Discord channel. But I'll go ahead and sew all this together and I'll be back uh, doing our last bit and uh, yeah, we'll finish it up. Okay, so I'm coming up to the end here. I'm just gonna go around, uh, I just went around our last front loop only. I'm gonna go around our first front loop only to connect these two ends here. Just a little bit, just like that. You can kind of see how we've got everything put together. And then our last bit that we wanna do is we wanna go backwards around this to connect it back down to the bottom. So we wanna go around our final bar here. So we'll go one, two, three, and four, like that. And then we're gonna go back into the body, into the same place where this is coming out, right here. And then I'm just gonna come out basically somewhere on the bottom shell like this, just like that. And then I'm gonna take the other tail end here from the bottom shell and have this come out through the same stitch as our brown end, like that. And then I'm just gonna double knot these two together, cut it close and stuff it in. So that's gonna be one and two. I was playing yarn chicken with that brown yarn though. We'll cut it nice and close and stuff this back into the bottom of the shell. There we go. Okay, now we'll just tweak everything into position. Go ahead and move everything. I'm gonna to try to get our neck under this just a little bit so that it's more in the shell. That's pretty good. Okay, let's get our limbs into position. He's sitting upright, get our head right. And that's pretty, oh my gosh, oh my God, it's so cute. Okay, and that is gonna be how to crochet. Oh my gosh, that's so cool. Honestly, this pattern is so cool. <laughs> I'm so proud of myself. Uh, I really hope you enjoyed making that. Let's go ahead and mess with his head here. Have it pull out, pulls out really far. Um, giant turtles have a really, really ridiculously long neck. And then back into the body. 
That one actually tucks in really, really well too. I'm pretty proud of that. Okay. Let's go ahead and do it. Untuck it one more time. Oh, it's so cool. I like it about halfway, so it's tucked just a little bit. Pretty adorable though. Thank you so, so much for crocheting this pattern along with me. I hope you enjoyed making it as much as I enjoyed designing it. And I really enjoyed designing this pattern. It was quite a lot of work, but oh my gosh, I mean, the product uh, speaks for itself. I mean, look at how cool this is and the fact that it tucks in. I'm definitely going to be using this technique again in the future for other kinds of patterns. So I can't wait to see uh, what else I make with the different techniques that I created in designing this pattern. Um, but yeah, I really hope you enjoyed making it. If you want to check out more Earth Day related patterns for these endangered creatures, you can find them all at clubcrochet.com slash Earth Day. All the proceeds for all of these patterns that you see on screen now go to the World Wildlife Fund to help support the endangered uh, creature that you'll be crocheting. There's a bunch of different ones from a dugong from Druby Zoo to a taper from Ohana Crafts and a few different patterns from Sir Pearl Grey, including this year's newest pattern from Sir Pearl Grey for Finn the sea turtle. I reached out to Sir Pearl Grey when I was doing this collaboration this year and I was like, hey, I wanna do two turtles. Will you do a turtle? I'll do a tortoise. And he was like, oh my gosh, heck yeah. And he made this adorable sea turtle. And the, my favorite part about this collaboration is we both go along crocheting a different pattern and we use so many different techniques in our patterns and I just learn so much from all the different amigurumi artists that make it. So make sure to check out Finn the Giant Sea Turtle uh, after this pattern if you'd like to. But again, thank you so much for crocheting this pattern with me. Now, if you like this video, well, prove it. Like down below, subscribe to the channel, and hit the little bell icon so you don't miss it when we come out with new videos like our live crochet alongs that we do every single week. It is a great way to support this channel. Um, other ways you can support this channel is with the Club Crochet membership. Memberships get early access to future patterns, access to the exclusive library of tutorials, of which there are over 300, and I add new ones every single month. And memberships start at only $5 a month and are a great way to help support this channel monetarily. You can learn more by just going to clubcrochet.com, but there's a whole lot of patterns over there if you want to check out more. Uh, okay, well, I think that's just about it. Thank you so much again for crocheting along with me. Pasta la pizza and happy hooking. I'll see you in the next pattern. Let's say bye. Let's say bye, Tuck. Bye. Oh, bye. So long.